we're going to be talking about smartbone actions in Moho. So everything that we have covered so far has been for the beginner to intermediate level. Now we're going to start getting into the more advanced stuff. Smartbones is truly what makes this software shine. It's a very powerful tool and its possibilities are endless. So what is a smartbone action? Well, let's take a look at this character that was created by Ogusan. And you can see here, I have my two legs and they both have target bones. Let's go to frame one and let's test the right leg with the manipulate bones tool, Z on the keyboard, making sure that you are on the bone layer and everything looks pretty good to go, right? Well, let's go ahead and let's move the second leg now. Whoa, what's going on there? If we have the two legs side by side, that leg looks a little deformed and wonky. This rig was bound by flexi bones. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of a pinch right here. So smart bones came along to fix this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create what's called a smart bone action. Now, when creating a smart bone, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the bone that is creating that deformation. Now, it's not the target bone. The target bones don't need smart bone actions. A target bone is something that's simply attached to another bone. It's more like a handle. The target bone doesn't rotate, but it does affect the rotation. It affects the rotation by inverse kinematics. But what actually is moving that's creating this pinch right here? Is it the leg bone? Well, if you remember, our leg bones or anything that is apparent is using forward kinematics. So this is technically just making the leg straight or going in the direction that the leg is going. But right here, it's this bone. This is our culprit. If I click on him with my select bone tool, L underscore shin, that is the name of this bone. This bone is what is rotating and creating this kink in this art. So this is the bone that we're going to be using to use for a smart bone action. So now I'm gonna go back to frame zero, make sure I'm on my bone layer. And with that bone selected, I know that bone is called L underscore shin. Now what you can do is you can copy this name, but it's very important to have this exact name when you're creating your smart bone action. Because what you're going to do now is you're gonna to go to your window, not the bone menu, but the window, and you're gonna to go to right here and it's called actions. Now the keyboard shortcut for this action window is control K. I would recommend using that keyboard shortcut as it will quickly improve your workflow. So right here, you can see we're in mainline. Mainline represents the design area. Everything that we've been using so far is the mainline. What we're going to be going into is the action timeline. So right now, this is the mainline. And what we're going to go into pretty soon here is the action timeline. But first, what I need to do is I need to create a smart bone action. To create a smart bone action, yours might look a little bit different than this. This is Moho Pro 12's interface. Yours might look slightly different, but you're going to click on the button that says new action. Now, when you click on that button, you may or may not have the name of that bone that you have already highlighted made for you. If not, simply just type out that name. It's very important to have it the exact same. So L underscore shin in this case. Shortcut key, you can leave that blank. That's actually something I never use and just hit okay. Now, if you named your smart bone action exactly as that bone, your bone itself is going to be highlighted. This lets you know that you had done it correctly. Now, the other thing that you probably had noticed is the color in my main line had changed to blue. This lets me know that I'm now in my action timeline. So watch what happens when I double click the main line. You see that? I am now in my main line. I'm gonna double click on my smart bone action, and now I'm in the action timeline. This is very important to know whenever you're using smart bone actions. It's also important to know that you need to be on your bone layer when creating your smart bone actions. If you're on any other layer other than your bone layer, then you're creating what's just called an action. I know a lot of this might be a little bit overwhelming if you're learning this for the first time, but I promise you with practice, you will get this down. So now that we are in this smart bone action, left shin, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this bone because remember it was when the bone was rotating that it was creating that pinch. Well, that's what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that bone, L shin. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard or the transform bone tool. And just like what we learned with the transform bone tool, I'm gonna come here to the middle of the bone to rotate it. So making sure that I'm on frame one is very important. I'm going to rotate that bone 90 degrees. 
Now we're back again, we have that kink and we rotated that bone 90 degrees, but you probably also noticed that the foot didn't rotate with it. This is because the foot is a target bone. Target bones do not move unless you move them. And in this case, we're technically breaking the target bone. However, just know when you're animating your animation, your target bone won't be broken like this. The software is just temporarily disconnecting or unparenting the target bone from the leg so we can make this rotation. Otherwise, we can never rotate this leg because we have a target bone attached to it. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're now going to fix this artwork, but we can't do it from the bone layer. We have to go into the layer of the leg itself. So you can either open the group layer and find this leg, or like I showed you before, Alt right click is the keyboard shortcut to quickly take you to the leg layer. Now what I'm going to do is I have my points now available to me. I can see the points of this animation and I'm just going to adjust those points. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to bring up my transform points tool and we're going to click and we're going to drag that point. Click and drag that point. All right, so everything looks pretty good there. Now if you need to, if you have any sort of funky shapes or any sort of curves going on that you don't like, if you hit C on your keyboard or click on this tool right here, this is your curvature tool. This is going to curve your points. But if you already put together your artwork, you're probably already familiar with this. So go ahead and use your curvature tool to fix out the different parts. I'm gonna come up here to the top of the leg and I'm just going to move that leg out a little bit. So something like that. All right, and to quickly check your artwork as well by removing the bones and the points, simply just click on your little check mark there. And that looks good. Okay, so I did all of that. Now I'm going to go from my smart bone action. I'm going to double click on my main line because now what I want to do is I want to test it and I want to see if this worked. So I'm going to double click on my main line. I'm going to go back to my main bone layer and I'm going to go to frame one, hit Z on the keyboard to bring up my manipulate bones tool. And I'm going to not click on this bone, but I'm gonna click on the target bone. Because remember, via inverse kinematics, the target bone is going to be affecting all the rest of the bones. So I'm going to click on the target bone and I'm gonna lift up his leg. And check that out, everything looks awesome there. So if you found this lecture to be pretty advanced and kind of over your head, don't really worry about it, just practice this. With the different characters that you create, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a lot of those pinches and a lot of those distortions. And this is gonna give you really good practice to figure out how target bones work. So either use this character or use any of the characters that you are creating. And with the method that I had shown you, go ahead and start creating your smart bone actions. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments. I would love to help you out as well if you run into any issues. Once you feel like you got a good grasp on this, be sure and join me in the next lecture. We're gonna go over smart bone dials. I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching this lecture on smart bone actions. I hope this helps you. If you want full details on the course, its release and any promotions for that course, be sure and sign up to my email list, The Moho Pros, by simply going down in the description and clicking on the link. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. I would love to answer those. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more awesome videos. I'll see you later.